Uh, go to the highest place you can find, put two strings in each hand, and then jump off. Note, this activity does pose significant risks and should not be attempted except under favourable wind conditions. Even then, you'd have to be completely insane. Grease one large round cake pan. Combine flour, eggs, butter, sugar and salt in a large mixing bowl. Beat thoroughly, then pour mixture into cake pans. Bake for 30 minutes and allow to cool. Note, this activity is in fact perfectly safe and most appropriate for right before your mum discovers you've done any of the other things described in my book. Boxing is a wonderful activity for boys. The first thing you'll need, besides a mate willing to let you hit him, is a pair of boxing gloves. Uh, these can be purchased from a leather craftsman or stolen out of the locker of a boy you don't like. Uh, the idea behind boxing gloves is twofold. To protect the boxer's hands and to minimise injury to the opponent. At least, that's what you should tell your mum when you ask her to buy them for you. She'll think you sound very mature. Now, be sure to use that word twofold as well. That will really impress her. Anyway, the real point of boxing gloves is they allow you to hide large heavy metal weights, which will really knock your opponent's lights out. That will teach him. Xavier Smedley is a unique entry in our rogues gallery of famous killers, in that he is neither famous nor a killer. However, I've always disliked him, and it is my sincere hope that his very inclusion on this list will be seen by prospective romantic partners, their parents, or future employers, and make his life difficult. If he didn't want that trouble, he shouldn't have sat in my chair. Terence Posture returned from work on an otherwise uneventful day to find his wife in bed with another man. Unable to control his rage, Posture leapt upon the couple with the firm intention of killing them both. However, his hands found only one throat. When all was said and done, his wife lay dead, and the unknown adulterer had fled. I think I left one of my good shoes there, too. Carl Tendency was hunting with a friend when tragedy struck. Attempting to climb over a mossy log, Carl slipped and his rifle fired, the bullet striking his friend squarely in the chest. It was almost certainly an accident, but still, he did kill him. So, I'm well within my rights to include it here. I guess, given the banality of the circumstances, he wasn't really famous. But when this book comes out, he bloody well will be then. King Logan is an evil tyrant. Monarchy, what is it good for? Never should the lives of the many be controlled by the will of one man. Or woman, seen that, doesn't work either. Anyway, what we need is a republic. In the past, I've called for democracy, but I was speaking to some people and they really opened my eyes to this republic thing. Rise up to overthrow the monstrous autocrat. In the meantime, appoint me as supreme ruler. I will faithfully oversee the transition from monarchy to republic, strictly on a temporary basis. Really, no, really, I mean it. You can trust me. King Logan's greed knows no bounds. How cruelly does he fleece our citizens of their hard-won coin through his onerous and unjust taxes? And how cruelly does his lick-spittle lackey, that rapacious dog Reaver, harshly exploit his poor, unfortunate workers? The time has come for change. Real change. What we need is a democracy. 
I know, I know, I'm always on about republics, but I did some further reading and I really think democracy offers a pretty compelling package. Shake off the yoke of monarchy, good people, and join me in the glorious struggle to create a new democracy. Or a republic is fine if you really have your heart set in that, but I do think we'd be missing out on a few things. As usual, my offer to oversee all aspects of government during the transition is still on the table.